Are you recuperating from an injury that's limiting your mobility or perhaps you're feeling tired from sitting all day at work? In Qigong, the ancient Chinese practice of holistic medicine, you can even heal your body while you're sitting. Hello, I'm Moon. Today, I'll be joined by Joanna Shun, a Qigong teacher and expert who will show you different Qigong movements you can do while sitting at home or even at work. So Joanna, how can Qigong still be beneficial in the sitting position? Well, all of the same criteria for having your Qi move through the body, uh, expelling sickness Qi or stimulating certain organ systems is going to apply whether you're standing, walking or sitting. The thing about sitting though mm -hmm. is it does allow people who are uh, let's say recovering from a flu or cold or some other uh, illness in which standing might just be a little bit too much of an expenditure of energy for them at that point. Right. Or as you had said earlier, uh, people who uh, can't stand or walk, let's say you're confined to a wheelchair or maybe you've had uh, surgery and are unable to move about, yes. you can still do the Qigong from the seated position and okay. get much benefit for your health. Okay, so the Qi or energy is still flowing while we are sitting by doing certain movements. Exactly. Okay, so we don't always have to be standing. That's really good to know because sometimes I get really lazy. <laughs> I'm lazy, so I just want to be sitting there. It's, it's wonderful to hear that we can exercise in the sitting position. I love it. Well, and also sometimes we don't have uh, enough space in the environment right. that we're at. Absolutely. Let's say you were at work and you wanted to take a few minutes break because right. stress levels or whatever right. is starting to get to you, then you can just take a few minutes right. from your chair and do some simple movements right. that will help to energize you, bring you know, chi, more chi and energy <laughs> to you. And you don't look like a freak at work if you're standing and doing all these movements. You can do it quietly behind your desk. <laughs> Exactly. Especially if you're in one of those places that have the little short cubicle yeah. walls. If you stand up, people will see <laughs> yeah, you. Exactly. If you're sitting down, they don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you may get fired if you start standing and doing Qigong. Okay, that sounds really great. So we're going to show them some sitting Qigong movements next. Exactly. So Joanna, along with Quinn, will now demonstrate sitting Qigong. So we'll begin by floating the arms up, shoulders high, shoulders wide, and moving the left foot to the left corner of the room. I'm gonna shake my hands, arms, all the way up to the shoulders. Look at the left hand and flutter to my belly where the lower dantian is. I'm gonna continue fluttering to the corner of the room, pointing the right fingers to the armpit. Looking at the right hand, I flutter to the belly and shake up to the other corner. So this gives chi to the heart meridian when I point my fingers to the armpit. It regulates the chi flowing in the Dai Meridian. We're going to change now, bringing the left foot to the front and shaking forward, shoulders high, shoulders wide. Shaking to the mouth to give chi to the mouth, the ribs, the Da Bao point, a spleen point, the thighs, and the left calf. And this movement is repeated three times. It's called drink water. And then from drink water, we're going to do look at the sky. So this is the third one. I'm going to bring my left foot back so it's shoulders wide. And then I'm going to float the arms up and look up. And then shake the arms down the sides looking straight ahead. I'm going to bring the hands to the abdomen. Now the right fingers will touch each neighbor. The left fingers will be spread. The right hand is underneath and the left hand on top. Now I'm going to shake at the belly. Three seconds shaking and three seconds stopping. Again and stop. And one more time and stop. So this movement was good for increasing uh, circulation in chi to the large intestine, small intestine, and reproductive organs. Now I'm going to do a movement called Grasp Chi. I'm going to drop the right fingers pointing to the ground, come up the stomach meridian with the right hand, reach out, close a fist, 
and bring the hand down to the waist, pulling it in and then lifting it up. Here the wrist is flat, the elbows up. The left hand, same thing, fingers point down, come up, reach out, close, pull down, in and up. So this movement is all about grabbing chi from the environment and bringing it into the chi hu point, which gives chi to the lungs, middle dan tian. Now I'm going to grasp chi in a different direction by changing the right hand so the little finger faces the chi hu point just below the collarbone. I'm going to open the fist, let the little finger come down the stomach meridian to the waist, reach out, up, close the fist, and pull in. Same thing, I'm changing the left hand, opening the fist, letting the hand go down, out, up, close, and pull in right hand. So this movement benefits what's called zong chi, which is good for your lungs. Okay, now we're going to finish by closing. I'm going to open the fists, return the hands to the sides, and do a final close. Closing is always important to bring the chi back into the original locations in the body and just to give that sense of closure. Joanna, I have a question. That was really great. Um, but I noticed that you were really flexible and you were bending a lot. You know, for those of us who are recuperating from an injury, you know, and we're not very mobile, mm -hmm. do we have to really bend that much? Of course not. The okay. Qigong can always be adapted to whatever you are able to do because it's better to change it slightly and do the Qigong movements than to not do it because of some um, issue in range of motion or mobility or physical constraint that you might have. So what I usually tell my students when I'm teaching is if you can't bend down, just go as low as you can and think again we come back to the mind, or what the Chinese call the yi. Your intention is most important, and it overrides what you're physically able to, to do with the hands or the feet or whatever. So as long as we're thinking about getting those hands down, the size of the calf to the ankle, even if physically we aren't doing that, you will still get the benefit. So again, the mind. I can't stress enough for Qigong to work. It's not about the movements. It's not about where I, you know, shaking my belly. It's about what your mind and it, the intention is. So the point is just do as much as you can as far as you can go. Don't push yourself, especially if you're injured. So thank you for letting us know that. So who says you can't still exercise while you're still in the sitting position? So next time you find yourself sitting at home or at work all day, try these really simple Qigong sitting movements. And I'm telling you, you're gonna feel better. Joanna is a wonderful Qigong teacher, so please visit her website at Just Tai Chi to learn more about Qigong and her amazing classes. Thanks for joining us. For all of my Asian living tips, visit my website at yinyangliving.com. Thank you. Come on, Sunday.